Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Well, you've waited for it. From the view count on the last video on this topic, uh, I know you really want it, so I'm happy to say it's Magloop time. Look, the do-it-yourself Magloop starter kit from Chameleon is just one aspect of it. I got a lot of feedback from people who want to acquire the components themselves, and that's perfectly okay to do. Uh, this is a learning channel and uh, that's what we're all about. So whether you have the starter kit uh, or you're sourcing the components yourself, rock and roll, go for it. Here's the bottom line. Uh, we're going to put together several different loops. The first build video and the build in this video is going to be called the open loop. Let's call it the O loop for short. This is going to be uh, one of three configurations. Yeah? 80 to 30 meter two turn loop or uh, 40 to 10 meter or 40 to 15 meter and uh, this is all about the turns on the loop uh, or the size of the loop we're gonna start it off this way while I'm learning and getting my head around the math of more complex builds yeah so stick with me my hands getting cold stick with me and uh, Let's build ourselves a map. Listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Well, our goal is to build a MAM portable magnetic loop antenna, similar to those you've seen on the channel before. We're going to accomplish that by using the Chameleon Magnetic Loop Starter Kit. We'll also need a few other components, but we'll go through those before we get started with the build. All right, let's go. Included with the magnetic loop starter kit is an air variable capacitor pre-drilled onto a backing plate, pre-wired and ready to install inside your enclosure. There's also a length of LMR400, PL259 connectors and SO239 connectors to complete the kit. The starter kit will get you started, but you'll need to come up with a few other components to make a ready magnetic loop antenna. All these components are based on my own loop build specs, which is a 806040 two-turn loop uh, that's collapsible, self-supporting, and has a switched capacitor so that I can convert it over to 40 through 10 meters. For my own build, I've added an enclosure. I've added the support mast and fittings to attach it to the enclosure. I've added a second length of LMR400 so that I can make a two-turn loop or a second dual parallel loop. I've added some T6 aluminium stock to make the pickup loop. I added an SO239 by 3816 adapter. And the cables, connectors, clamps, screws, nuts and everything else to make it all come together. Ultimately, what you'll need will be defined by the requirements you have for your own loop. Either way, it might be a nice idea to watch the entire video before you get started. Now, if it isn't already clear from the introduction, we're going to base this loop build on the best aspects of the P loop and the F loop from Chameleon. Now we also have the third option of using custom dimensions for our loop size based on our own unique requirements. F-loop and P-loop dimensions are coming up and you'll also find links to tools that we use to determine our own custom dimensions in the description of this video. Our critical measurements are the circumference and diameter of the main loop or conductor. That's also true for the pickup loop. Another important design consideration based on loop measurements, especially critical with the MAM portable loop, is finding that critical balance between a loop which is large enough and efficient enough, or a loop which is so large that it will start to sag upon its own weight. This might help you understand why I'm building a smaller double loop rather than something bigger. So let's keep our loop builds as symmetrical as possible. So this first part of the build is the O-loop. That's a 40 through 10 meter single term loop based on the Chameleon P-loop. The main loop circumference is 256 centimeters or 100.79 inches. 
This is a good thing because the kit includes uh, 382 centimeters or 150 inches of LMR 400. That's enough LMR 400 for your main loop and pickup loop. The pickup loop has a circumference of 55 centimeters or 21.65 inches. Not only do these measurements define the loop dimensions, but they also give you enough information to understand how long of a support mast you need for your own loop build. On the O-Loop MCOM, the pickup loop is going to remain the same circumference of 55 centimeters or 21.65 inches. Now, regarding the main loop, there's two different ways we can build it. I'm doing it the way it's done on the Chameleon F-Loop, using two separate pieces of LMR 400. The first piece of LMR 400 is identical to the first O-Loop build, and that is 256 centimeters or 100.79 inches. The second turn is going to be about 267 centimeters or 105.11 inches. You'll have to adjust for the enclosure that you use. And remember that measurement also includes the connectors and the barrel connector required to attach it to the first turn. If you're not interested in 30 through 10 meters, you can have a single length of 523 centimeter or 205.9 inch a double turn main loop that'll also get rid of some of the connection losses. Now let's talk about configuring the capacitor. If your loop build is based on the basic O-loop 40 through 10 meter single turn loop, then there's nothing to do. In contrast, if you're building the 80, 60, 40 meter version of the O-loop MCOM, you'll need to make either one of two changes. With mod 1, we're going to add a jumper between the frame of the capacitor and the output of the capacitor, but you're only going to have 80 through 40 meters. Mod 2 is what we're doing on my build, and that's where we're going to add a switch between the frame of the capacitor and the output of the capacitor. That'll let you switch back and forth between a single turn 40 through 10 or a double turn 80 through 40 meter loop. Now we can start mounting the capacitor inside our enclosure. The very first thing we're going to do is measure out the center line of the enclosure and mark it. That center line is important so that we know where to drill the hole for the tuning shaft. Now with the tuning dial removed from the 6 to 1 speed reducer, go ahead and place the capacitor inside your enclosure. Make a mark at the top of the tuning shaft on the enclosure. Then you can drill your small pilot hole beneath it. Just a side note for those of you who are installing the switch, don't get ahead of yourself. Install the dial, measure, and then drill the hole for the switch. But now we can continue our measuring and marking and drilling the rest of our holes inside the enclosure. And if you're following my model, you'll be left with something that looks kind of like this. Now it may not be perfect, but this is the first time I've built an HF loop for MAM Portable Ops. It'll do the job. Now let's go ahead and mount the capacitor inside the enclosure. The starter kit already has two mounting holes on the mounting platform. I just measured out those holes on the enclosure to match up with the mounting plate. That worked out really well. And this is what it looks like when it's installed. If you haven't done so, go ahead and place the switch on the enclosure. Now let's take a look at the SO239s, PL259s and make the main loop. Now you may have wondered why we have ring connectors on the end of the outputs from the capacitor when the SO239 has a soldered center pin. This is because we short the center conductor and the shield of the LMR400 so that we can make use of the center conductor and the shield as the entire conductor for the main loop. 
I suppose we could achieve exactly the same thing by shorting the center conductor of the SO239 to one of the chassis mounts on the connector. If someone wants to try that, let me know how it works out for them, please. We'll share it with the rest of the community. Since I don't have a better way to do it, this is how it's done on this build. First things first, remove the foil and insulator from the LMR400. Uniformly fold back some of the shield material. Wrap the remainder of the shield braid around the center conductor. Using your soldering iron, tack the braid and center conductor together. Now you can install the PL259 onto the LMR400. Don't forget the outside portion of the PL259. Now let's turn our attention to making the pickup loop. The section was made with the help of Frank Durenberg on November 4, Sierra Papa Papa. Looking at the diagram on the right called inductive coupling, you can see three different examples. In the first example, you see this is, it could be a heavy gauge wire, copper tubing, or in my case, aluminum stock, T6 aluminum stock. Now with the second example, the starter kit includes enough coax cable at LMR400 to make the pickup loop with that. In that example, they're using the outer shield with the inner conductor completely isolated and fed directly to a coax cable. In the third example, you see the outer shield and casing are removed and only the dielectric and the center conductor remain. So although the aluminum stock looks complicated, it's just the same as the example as you see on the left. The only difference is we terminate it with an SO239 connector. So it's almost certain the double loop version is working. Of course we're going to need some tweaks and some tuning to get it just right, uh, but that's par for the course. So I've set up a page at www.oscarhotel8sierratangonovember.org uh, which includes all the build notes, links, uh, whisper tests, uh, images, tutorials, lots of things to help you build this loop. Either the double loop 80, 60, 40 version or the single loop 40 through 10 meter. You'll also find direct links to the Do-It-Yourself Magnetic Loop group on Facebook. Absolutely everything you need you'll find in the description or on www.oh8stn.org. As always, rock and roll and thanks for watching. Ciao.